Hi and welcome back to my workshop. I'm Tony and if you're following me you'll know that I'm building the uh, Jag Panther 38 or the Hetza, another 1-6 to six scale kit from Armatech. When I say building I've actually completed the build. Uh, it seems like a long journey and it probably has been a long journey um, but it's, I've enjoyed every single minute of this build. It's a wonderful, wonderful little kit from Armatech. Um, and uh, when I left off last time I completed the camo scheme and I'm really really pleased with the results and in the meantime or since then I've gone ahead and I've done all the electronics um, it took a long time uh, my friend Adrian from the Armatech forum came over and we had a great day sort of messing around uh, a couple of boys uh, in, the, in the garage sort of uh, doing all the wiring and, and uh, just tidying everything up and then Adrian does his magic and gets it all sequenced wonderfully uh, and then we took it off the table and we had some driving around and we had a bit of fun doing that so what I'll do in a minute I'll take the camera off the hilt I'll talk you through how we've set it up in this particular tank because there is some real challenges because of lack of space and then once I've done that I'll fire it up uh, so I can talk you through its various functions and then after that I'm going to start doing the weathering so today is really all about the weathering um, and I'm just going to do some paint weathering I'm not going to do any damage to the tank I just can't bring myself to to start bashing it up and putting dents in it I just just can't I've thought about it but no um, but I'm definitely going to do some paint weathering on it I'm um, looking forward to that I've also done some decals on the tank um, and they're going to be part of the old overall finished scheme and then well, if I get time today once it's all done I'll get it off the table and we do some driving around on it so I'll reset the camera or pick it off the tilt and I'll talk you through the setup very soon right so let's just take you for a little tour around the the setup of the uh, electronics and I'm going to try and do this without uh, messing the camera up so first things first this kit comes with two speakers so that the in the option pack in your sound pack you get two speakers um, I could not fathom out where I was going to fit two speakers and allow the the lid to sit correctly um, so we decided that we'll go for one speaker and actually it works perfectly so you know a way around helping with the space constraint inside this hole would be a single speaker um, it works fine and you'll see that shortly when I fire this thing up and then uh, I've got the switches positions uh, let me just take it out so the I've got the the smoke switch down here on and off I've got the main power on and off here all secured with velcro and then I've got my inline breaker here and I can access these because with the HETA there's so many uh, flaps and access panels um, it's less of an issue with trying to position switches etc and then I've got my battery secured on the bottom there I don't know if you can see it there's a there's a piece of aluminium angle down in the bottom there that just stops it from sliding and I've got another piece on the other side of the batteries again just secured with velcro and, and I've just put some timber blocks in either side just to stop the batteries from sliding side to side um, everything is away from any form of heat um, the only real heat source is the smoke unit which is uh, just this this piece here um, and this is the new smoke unit and it works phenomenally good um, and the little transistor for the smoke unit is just here and I've just again I've just velcroed that and, and then if we come along I've got the audio or the sound card and the audio box positioned on top of the acrylic shelf I've got the recoil module uh, I've sat the recoil module uh, in, a, in a space that it does not uh, doesn't clash with the recoil mechanism when it when it sort of operates I've got my receiver um, typically you want to have these at sort of you know 90 degree the aerials if you like or, uh, at 90 degrees so that's set like that and underneath I've got the main it's very difficult to see but when the power's on I can actually see uh, the main sort of uh, the main sort of power unit power can power module and that will show me when it's lit up uh, how much battery life I've got and I've got the other motion control unit just sitting underneath very hard to see um, and that is effectively it so I'm really happy with the way it's set up uh, what I'll do in a moment I will uh, I'll fire everything up and we'll go through the functionality of this amazing Hetzer right so got my radio set on um, I've put my breaker on I've turned the smoke on now I'm just going to turn the power on to the tank and just waiting for the there we go it's now receiver and the radio oh, just waiting for that to bind and there we go so that's it uh, so we're now set up and uh, first thing what I love by the way about this is why is that okay it's fine um, 
What I love about this, and I'll do this from this side, is the, the, the Armatech have given other functionalities in this tank. Now you don't have a machine gun. Uh, well you do, but it's not connected by servo or remote. Um, you have your main gun, uh, you've got your slew mechanism, you've got up and down and left and right. Um, and of course you've got your drive, you've got your sound and you've got your smoke. Um, what I hadn't said earlier on is that we're, it, in order to connect this to the roof, uh, I used a piece of copper tubing or copper pipe that I've, or fitting that I found in my toolbox. Um, and that just helps slide onto the roof section, which um, will uh, eventually uh, obviously jet the, the smoke out of the back of the exhaust on the roof. But you should see when we start this up. Now, what I love about this is the false start. Um, and on this, this particular one has been set up to be three clicks um, up, one down. I love that. And then let's just fire it up. Lovely jet of smoke. And as you can hear, no problem with the sound at all. Now we're just uh, two clicks up and one down. We'll obviously put it into gear if you like. Um, and now we'll just start driving. And we should start seeing an increased amount of smoke coming out of the exhaust. left and right and that's just to sort the gun out and you can see that and this time it's four clicks up One down, and you know, hopefully you saw the, the, the gun flare. I love this smoke unit that Harmatech have developed. It's just so good, um, and I love the fact that uh, you know when you when you when you first start it. I, I think it even gives you a puff of smoke on the um, full start. Let's just try that. Can see the smoke trying to get up there, but uh, let's just give it one, one, one more start. How good is that? How amazing is that? I love this, and I love the fact that Armatech just continue to. I'll just turn that off. Just continue to improve this uh, functionality of these um, tanks, um, and I'll turn everything off now. And the servos just go to rest. I'll turn this off. I love, love, love the fact that Armatech really think these things through and, and just keep continuing to improve and add to the realism of these amazing tanks. Um, so that really the next thing for me to do is to reconnect up the, uh, the roof, um, connect it up to the exhaust. Um, I forgot to say also, this is the filler hose for the smoke unit. Um, and again, I can get access to that through one of the back flaps. Um, and then we're going to get cracking with the weathering. And then obviously if I'll get time today, I will get the tank off the table onto the ground and we'll do some maneuvering. So, um, hope you enjoyed that and I'll be back very soon. Right. So I'm just about to mix and paint up. Um, uh, what I'm looking for is I want to give it kind of a, a salty wash over the whole face of the tank first and then go around and pick up elements of rust and uh, other sort of you know oil grease areas um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to mix up some paint I'm just using acrylic paint um, now you want this to be very heavily diluted so it's, it's got a wash coat so I'm just going to put some rust based color in the bottom of that a little bit of white but this is off white and then I'm just going to use some, uh, if it goes back on, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to use some thinners, some acrylic paint thinners, and I'm just going to 
basically fill that little jar up by about two thirds of that. I'm gonna pop the lid back on that and I'm gonna give it a really good shake. There's a bit of paint stuck on the side so I'll just Give that a bit of a mix up with the brush. And you really want it just as a bit of a watery um, sort of, uh, base. I'm just gonna show you on here. So what, what we're gonna do, I'm just testing it on here. You want that to be runny like that. If you can see that on there, there we go. And then you're gonna use another brush, a dry brush just to feather that down so you get that sort of kind of a, a salty kind of finish so what we'll do now is I'll um, I'll spin the camera around and uh, we'll start working on one side of the header right so I've started on the top here and just so I can show you get the other brush to hand just put plenty of solution or pl plenty of the paint solution on your brush and you just run it along the side like that you want it to be fairly wet and then getting your dry brush you literally just feather that down this is where you should be having a bit of fun with this you know it you shouldn't worry too much I mean it takes a bit of work and a few times of doing it and it will start building up that sort of that worn salty kind of look as if it's been out in the weather for a while um, and we'll just carry on <clears throat> Gonna go across here. You don't want it going down into the electronics, of course. I want to try and get it to look as if it's it's run down the tank. Obviously when this dries it will dry a little bit lighter than this. All you want to do is really just get some of the highlights around some of these parts here. And don't panic. It's all part of you know making it look older than it is and we can start seeing that the the camouflage that I've previously put on is starting to fade which is kind of what I was after what I'm also going to do is put some thinners sorry I'm doing this away from camera and just I don't want to see these lines here so I'm just using a bit of thinners just to break that line sort of going nicely over the decals as well so that it looks aged I mean there's a bit more work to be done to this but hopefully that gives you the, the gist of it and obviously that will dry a little bit lighter than that so what we'll do now is we'll go along and we'll do a line along here
because it's quite thin this it's not really going to do any serious damage to the to the tracks or anything like that and it's all going to be washed off when we put the thinners on it and just can wipe off some of the excess and then just a bit more thinners on the on the brush and we can start getting that streaky kind of look that I want and what I'm going to do is once I've done all this I'll go around and I'll put some kind of rust highlighting around these uh, fixings in here and a few bits of metallic I'll pick up a bit of the sort of metallic finish as well um, sort of highlighting some of the steel components I quite like that kind of thing because you know you'd expect to see that not sure how well that's coming out in the camera but I think yeah you can you can get a gist of what we're trying to achieve here um, now I'm going to carry on and uh, Ben will probably speed the whole process up I'm pretty happy with uh, the way that's turned out I've got it uh, weathered the way I want it um, I've gone around and done some dry brushing uh, so it's just a little bit of detailing around the exhaust around the gun barrel um, and I'm really pleased with the, uh, the results so um, I'm now going to get this wonderful little kit onto the floor 
and we'll give it its first proper little run out right so um, here she is my wonderful little Hetzer so let's start this uh, let's start her up Gonna go. This will work lovely. Really, really pleased how this has come out. Do you know what? I know this tank doesn't have a turret. I know it's smaller than its big cousins, brothers, sisters, whatever. But what a wonderful little kit. I think what Armatech have done on this is incredible. I'm so pleased. I went with this option. I'll, um, I'll zoom the camera out and then we can have a bit more of a longer run. The grass is just too long and the ground is just too soft for me to run this on the grass at the moment. It will just chew up the lawn and then I'll be in all sorts of trouble. I might turn the volume up actually on that. absolutely wonderful model uh, I just want to try that sort of full start again actually that's the gun sorry oh I love that I absolutely love that I haven't got a huge range on the uh, on the gun, but I guess its job was to hide and uh, disrupt.
pleased the way this is operating. Absolutely love the look they've managed to achieve on this. Well, I'm really pleased with that. So I'm going to put that. Uh, I'm going to put the header now back on its table. The weather is getting worse here. It's really windy. Uh, my next thing I'm going to do with the header is get it out with the Tiger and the Pershing, and we'll have a bit of a, a driving video. Um, that'll be sort of a little bit in the future. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll just put it back on the bench, and I'll be back to camera. So that's it. Um, that's the end of the build for the Hetzer, and I'm going to say I've enjoyed every single moment of it. And if you've joined me on the journey, I hope you've enjoyed watching as much as I've enjoyed building it. It's been a real pleasure. And I'm going to tell you that I know it's not a big tank in comparison to the M26 or the Tiger, and it doesn't have a turret, etc., etc. But what it lacks in that, it makes up in looks. I think I just love it. I love the look of it, the shape of it, and the build has been an amazing experience. So if you are, um, you know, on the fence and considering buying an Armatec tank, um, you know, I would definitely consider the Hetzer. It's a, a, it's it's one of the cheaper options that they offer, um, but nonetheless, uh, you know, satisfying to build. And in fact, I think. I've, you know, the, the the way the journey has gone for me, I'm pretty much, in, you know, on par with building the other tanks. It's, a, you know, a different experience, but equally, equally as good. Um, and also, I'm just really pleased that I've stepped it up a few stages uh, with the camo scheme and the extensive weathering I've done on this. It's something I haven't done in the past. Um, and I, you know, I, I just continue to learn and develop my skills uh, during the course of these builds. So a massive thanks to all of you who uh, joined me for this uh, journey and my previous journeys. And at the time of filming, I, I have actually sold the Tiger. It's going off to a new home. I'm gonna give a shout out to Andy Thompson, who's a fellow YouTuber. Um, he's actually been in, uh, down here today. He's taken it for a run and really loves it. And I'm really pleased that the Tiger is gonna to go to a home and a guy that's gonna really appreciate it and uh, enjoy it as much as I have. Um, so, and what we're going to do, because uh, he's a fellow YouTuber, when he arrives to collect it, we just got to arrange that collection date. When he arrives to collect it, we're going to film him collecting it, and he's going to film it um, arriving at its new destination. So, um, having said all of that, uh, I'm now going to sort of sign off by saying that my next uh, series of build is the Series One uh, Rover. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that. I really hope you uh, come along on that journey with me as well. Um, and also, I'm going to start uh, making some calls to Armatec because now I've sold my Tiger, I'm dead keen to get another tank uh, in the pipeline. So I'll let you know how I get on with that. But in the meantime, I'll sign off by saying thanks again for everything, all your support, all your subscriptions, all your comments, all your thumbs ups. I absolutely love doing these videos. I hope you enjoy them as well. And I'll see you on my next build, hopefully. See you soon. Thank you.